And today, a 33-year-old in Kerala also finally heard the judgment she was waiting for. No, she didn't go to the court. She watched it on TV because she barely goes out anymore. When she was just 16, she was abducted and then raped by numerous men over and over again in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. 18 years after the heinous assault, 24 men were convicted today on charges ranging from rape, outraging the modesty of a woman, to abetting the crime. The man who was the ringleader has been sentenced to life in prison by the Kerala High Court. After 18 painfully long years, justice for the Surinali raped survivor. Raped at the age of 16, while she was still in school, meant she battled years of isolation and being boycotted by many. So much so that she had to shift from her hometown to another district. For the family, the High Court's order that there is no reason to disbelieve the survivor's statements is a validation of their daughter's battle. 23 out of 30 have been convicted and sentenced to jail terms ranging from 4 to 13 years, while the prime accused, Dharmarajan, has been sentenced for life. The prosecution submitted that the victim was raped 67 times within 40 days in several locations in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. While the trial court had earlier convicted 35 people in this case, in 2005, the High Court reversed the judgment acquitting 34 out of the 35 accused. Following shock and outrage, the case was reopened on the Supreme Court's directions. <laughs> It's perhaps just the beginning of happier times for the rape survivor and her family, who had to face years of humiliation and waited for years before they got finally their justice. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. So a landmark judgment in Mumbai once again raising the question of whether capital punishment can be a deterrent for rape. And joining us today for more on this is a f the former police officer and activist. That's Kiran Bedi, of course. And we have Kavita Srivastav, the General Secretary of PUCL or the People's Union for Civil Liberties. Kavita, to you first. When we heard Nirmala Savant, member of the National Commission for Women in our story, I could almost see you cringing. But explain to us why not the death penalty as the court asked if death penalty is not invoked here, then in which case? These guys were remorseless. They enjoyed the victim's helplessness. Why would this not be a deterrent? See, this actually the impact of this judgment is going to be otherwise. Um, you know, the rapists in the future are going to kill the woman. They will destroy the witness to the crime who is the woman herself and this is going to create so much fear in women that this last year of a kind of opening out of women coming out reporting recording we are going to see a reversal I don't think this judgment is built even I mean even the premise of this judgment is faulty uh, the whole argument was that losing one's chastity is worse than death. What is this argument? We threw it out centuries ago. And also, if you look at it within the framework of the statute books and death penalty, it's not the rarest or the rare case. How can we call it a landmark judgment? I think this is a terrible trend and there's going to be a reversal to what we're seeing in the last few days. We are against this judgment totally. Right. We hope Kiran the Kavita High Court has, is going to reverse Kiran, it. Kavita has a very valid point there. One, you know, what if we just lead to a situation where you have the rapists wanting to get rid of their victims forever so they don't testify again? them in India you have so many cases where you have rapes happening within one's homes what if young children are prevented from testifying or reporting a crime that their parents have done their fathers have done because they're scared that their father will be sentenced to death Sarah I don't think we should only uh, anticipate or worry for what coming next I think what's important is the message is going that India is finally punishing. India is finally punishing its people. India is delivering fast enough and India is finally becoming a punisher. Because India, our justice system wasn't punishing enough. Our investigations were not speedy enough. Our investigations were not 
effective and efficient enough. I think what's happening is investigation is becoming more forensic and evidence. People are also now deposing and now the justice is also delivering and the judges are also becoming, I think, clear that this crime has to be punished and it has to be zero tolerance. Look what these culprits said, Sarah. They said, we are evil, we have raped many girls, but no one ever caught us. And Mr. Nikam said that this is exactly what they, that they were not afraid of the law. I think this is the first time there's a message going that the law is becoming effective. But law Lady, is delivering. But Ms. And Lady, justice is meant for society as a whole. It's not just doing justice to the victim. It's just society as a whole. Because these are crimes against the state. All right, Ms. Bailey, but I have to that ask. In future, you're known the for man your may just at the her. Hard jail, ma'am, where you invested a lot in rehabilitation. You made inmates to making them members of society again, giving them skills, giving them respect for the law. Let, yet you're here today supporting the death penalty. I've always supported death Sorry, penalty for such heinous crimes. Mm -hmm. this, remember, you, you have to punish also. You have to reform also. Now let's understand this case. Supposing this, now that they've got the death penalty, and finally they got to get death penalty hung after five, six years. By the time the prison has worked on reforming them, I think that would be a different story. But separate the judgment from reform inside the prison. I'm for reform, but I'm also for punishment. We must, punishment also is very important justice. It's a justice to society as a whole. But it must come within one year now. What Kavita is saying, I support her in some ways. But what I would say is that we must punish now and hang them within one year. Because the punishment to have more if, uh, a deterrent effect must be fresh in the people's mind and connect the punishment to the crime. I think that's what's happening today. Nirbe's case was connecting to the crime. Shakti Mills's case is now connecting to the crime. And also about repeat offenders. All right, Let's Kavita, I can see you're disagreeing there with Ma'am Bedi. But I just have thing. to ask, this case is the one of, it's the most important case. This, this, this case got made so many headlines. Going forward, would a court now be overcautious about passing such verdicts if there was a death penalty involved? See, I, I want to say two, three things. Even in this case, they have invoked this new section called 376E, which talks of repeat offenders. I think the whole interpretation of re repeat offenders in this case has been wrongly interpreted. That is why I said that the High Court is going to reverse it. You know, a repeat offender is one who is after served a sentence and then commits a second offense. So I think this, uh, there has been a travesty of justice actually from the side of the judge. Secondly, we are not saying no punishment. I want to tell Kiran Bedi, we are saying life sentence is something which can give the young lads, they are 19, 20, 21, to think, to rethink. You can't completely, you know, shun or, you know, sentence people, uh, send them to the gallows at such young ages. No, I don't think. I think the principle of law application is totally wrong. And I don't think the message is right. The message is a savage society. This is the message that we are giving, that we are savages. If they were savages, we are equal savages. I am not willing to accept this as a rule for our society. All and right, I agree Kavita. with you here. All that right, Kavita. This case was and high profile. Bedi, thanks so much uh, for joining minute. us on this. And for this yeah, argument I mean, could go on for forever, for many shows. But I think perhaps we can leave, give the last word to the father of the Surian Ali victim. I spoke with him just a short while ago and I asked him first, after all these years, is this justice? In the initial stages, and till, till today, this justice was denied to us. Only today we got this final justice. Because of in the earlier stages, there was nobody to help us. I am a believer of God. God gave me this inner strength to fight myself. It is my duty to fight against such criminals. 
So you've heard of the death penalty sentence for the repeat offenders in the Shakti Mills case. Do you believe this was a correct judgment? Can rapes be deterred by a death sentence? The punishment of this death punishment is necessary. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, if you are a mother, then only you will come to know that uh, how you are uh, keeping your child, uh, ch 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 child uh, if you give death punishment, we just, uh, to, to an extent, we can minimize such rape cases. And finally, sir, your daughter is now 33. What was her reaction to today's verdict in her case? And does this in any way bring some closure or empower her to move on now that the law has proved that she was innocent? Uh, now she understands that uh, this, uh, this law is behind her. No, I don't think that whether any change will be in her life. Society is very cruel, especially in Kerala. This society is very, very cruel. Till date, when we are going out for a walk or a marketing or for to uh, this bazaar, etc., these people look up and are laughing at us. So a big step forward for legal justice today, but what about social justice as that father just explained the plight of his daughter and his family?